Hello, and welcome to Drunk on Tea. Today, I'm returning to Middle Earth. I'm going to paint this cave troll. They have a cave troll. So to start with, I've primed the model black to give us a nice solid base coat to work off of for all the rest of our colours. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint all of the skin. So I'm coming in with some Mechanica Standard Grey. I'm going to apply a couple of coats over all of his skin areas. So this will take a couple of coats to build up a nice solid cover, but just work your way around the model. Paint all the areas of skin, which is quite a lot of the model, with a couple of coats of Mechanica Standard Grey. Make sure you work this into all of the recesses and areas around all the scales and things. You don't have to be too neat, we'll paint the rest of the areas with other colours later. And after a couple of coats you can see we've got a nice solid cover of Mechanica Standard Grey all over the skin of the Cave Troll. So now I'm coming in with some known oil, I'm going to shade all of that skin. Make sure you work this into the recesses and cover all of the skin with a shade of known oil. And after the known oil's dried, you can see it's really added definition to that skin as it's found its way into all of the recesses. So the next step, I'm going to dry brush some Mechanica Standard Grey all over the skin. Just work your way all over the model, dry brushing all of that skin with another coat of Mechanica Standard Grey. It can be quite heavy at this stage as we're bringing the colour back up to that bright colour before we applied the shade. With that dry brush applied you can see it's added a bit of transition to the details all over the skin. So now I'm coming in with some Dawnstone and once again I'm going to dry brush this all over the model. Make this a slightly lighter dry brush than last time so you can leave a little bit of the Mechanica Standard Grey showing through and some of the Dawnstone on the most raised areas on top. And with the Dawnstone applied there's just one more dry brush we're going to apply and then all of the skin will be painted. So now I'm coming in with some Administratum Grey and with a very light dry brush I'm going to apply this all over the skin. I'm using a big thick makeup brush here, allows me to apply a very nice light layer of Administratum Grey all over the model. And with the Administratum Grey applied, you can see it's given a really nice effect to the skin all over the cave troll. So now I'm coming in with some Mournfang Brown, and with this I'm going to paint it all over the cloth that's here around his waist. So it'd be nice and neat at this stage, don't want to get this over any of the skin that we've already painted. But just apply a couple of coats of Mournfang Brown to all of the cloth areas on the model. couple of coats we built a nice solid cover of Mournfang Brown all over that cloth. So 
So now I'm coming in with some lead belcher and I'm going to apply this to all of the metal areas on the model. So it's this chain coming down his body here. He's also got a collar around his neck. He's got some metal areas here on his loincloth. And of course you've got the big hammer in his hands. So make sure you catch this with a couple of coats of lead belcher to get a nice solid metal cover all over. With that lead belcher applied, there's only one more base coat left to apply to the model. And for that, I'm just coming in with some Rhinox hide. I'm going to apply it to a couple of select places on his collar. So it looks like strapping holding some of the spikes on. So just be nice and neat at this stage. Just catch a couple of areas with a little bit of Rhinox hide. And with that Rhinox hide applied, that is the base coats applied to the model. So now I'm coming in with some Agrax Earth Shade. For this, I'm just going to shade what paint it with Mournfang Brown. So it's just this cloth hanging down from his waist. And then with some known oil, we're going to shade all of the metal areas. So obviously that's the hammer, the collar, the chain going down the chest, and the little bits on his loincloth as well. Catch all of these with some known oil. If you're enjoying the video, please press like. If you want more videos, press the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. With those shades dried, you can see it's added some definition all over the model. So now it's time to start highlighting that loincloth. So to start with, I'm coming in with some Mournfang Brown again placing this on all of the areas that the shade didn't settle. So wherever the shade's gone into a recess, I'm coming in on either side of that with some thinned down Mournfang Brown to help bring it back up to colour. So as you can see here, the shade settled into all of these recesses on the loincloth. So I'm coming on either side of them with a bit of Mournfang Brown and bringing them back up to colour. Take your time at this stage, just catch all of those raised areas with a little bit of Mournfang Brown. And with that Mournfang Brown applied, it's lightened up those raised areas all over the cloth. So now I'm coming in with a 50-50 mix of Mournfang Brown and Scrag Brown. I'm applying this in the middle of those areas that we just applied the Mournfang Brown. So keep this nice and thin again. Focus this into the middle of the areas we just applied the previous layer. This will build up to a nice transition towards our highlights.
try and focus this on the most raised areas of the cloth, leaving some of that more fan brown showing and the shade in all of the recesses. And now with some scrag brown, and apply an edge highlight on all the sharpest points of that fabric. So it's an edge highlight around all of the sharp areas and a line on the top of the most prominent folds and creases. Give them all an edge highlight of scrag brown. So just take your time and make sure you pick out all of those raised areas with a thin edge highlight of scrag brown. The scrag brown applied that's that cloth highlighted and looking really nice so now i'm coming in with some gorethor brown i'm just applying this as an edge highlight on the little bits of rhinox hide we applied before so just pick out some sharp points with a thin line of gorethor brown And with the Gorethor brown applied, the next thing we're going to highlight is the metal. So for this I'm coming in with some Stormhost Silver. I'm going to apply this as an edge highlight on all the sharpest points of the metal. So it's the edge of all of these chain links here. Catch them with a small amount of Stormhost Silver. An edge highlight on then these little metal plates on his loincloth catch any raised bumpy details on them as well and of course the hammer in his hands for this I'm just giving an edge highlight around the sharpest points all the way around the hammer and on the handle as well just work your way around give an edge highlight to all the areas of metal with some stormhose silver And with that applied, that's the first round of base coats painted and highlighted. So now we're going to add the flesh tone that's in the middle of his chest. So for this I'm coming in with some Bugman's Glow. We're going to paint in the area that we want to be a fleshy colour. So I draw sort of the outline first with a bit of Bugman's Glow for the area that I want. And then fill in up to the chain paint all of this with a couple of coats of Thinned Bugman's Glow. And then on the other side, I'm also going to draw in the shape that I want going down to his waist. And this is the area that I want to be a pinky fleshy colour. He's also got two spots on his arms as well that I'm going to paint as fleshy areas too. And you see after the first coat it's not the best coverage so I'm coming back in with a second coat building these areas up to a really solid cover of Bugman's Glow. And after a couple of coats you can see we've got a solid cover of these fleshy areas on his chest and his arms. So now with some Reichland Flesh Shade, I'm going to shade those areas we just painted with Bugman's Glow. Try not to get this over any of the stuff we painted with Mechanica Standard Grey, but if you do get a little bit over the rest of the stuff we painted with Mechanica Standard Grey, it will be okay because it will just help look like a transition between the two colours. And after that Reichland Flesh Shade has dried, you can see it's really added definition to those skin areas. 
So now we're going to start highlighting these up. First of all, with some Cadian Flesh Tone, putting this on all of the raised areas and where the shade hasn't really settled. So I'm working my way around, keeping the paint nice and thin. And wherever the shade settled, I'm leaving that, but coming in on every other area and bringing it up to a brighter color with the Cadian Flesh Tone. As you can see here, I'm leaving the shade in all the creases. I'm coming in on either side of every fold with the Cadian Flesh Tone and bringing it up to a much brighter flesh color. This will take a couple of coats to get a real solid cover, but just work your way all over that skin, paint all the raised areas with some Cadian Flesh Tone. after the first coat is still very patchy so I'm coming back in with a bit more Cadian flesh tone to really focus this onto the most raised areas to help build up that transition to a brighter skin by having your paint really thin you can build up these transitions because it will let a little bit of the previous layer show through After a couple of coats, you can see we've got some nice transitions from the darker areas to the lighter. And now I'm coming with some Kislev Flesh. And for this, I'm picking out the most raised areas. So it's all the spots, all the edges of all the muscles. I'm giving these all an edge highlight of Kislev Flesh to make them really stand out. You can see here, it's sort of down the middle of this area here in the middle of his chest, I'm putting a thin line of Kislev flesh will really act like a highlight. So take your time, work your way around the model, just pick out all of these raised areas with an edge highlight of Kislev flesh. And with that Kislev flesh applied, there's only a couple of things left to paint on the cave troll now. So the next thing I'm going to paint are the scales. So I'm coming in with some Corvus Black for this. And I'm picking out every scale that's on his back and on his legs. Once again, it may take a couple of coats to get solid cover all over these scales, but just take your time, pick out every single one of them with a thin coat of Corvus Black. Don't forget the ones on his legs as well. Pick these out with some Corvus Black too, just to make them stand out as a contrast against the gray of the rest of the model. After a couple of coats of Corvus Black, you can see we've got nice solid cover of black all over those scales. So now with some Mechanica Standard Grey, I'm just going to give all of these scales an edge highlight. You can focus this just onto the tops of the most raised or sharpest areas, but just pick out each scale with a thin highlight of Mechanica Standard Grey. And with those scales highlighted, that is most of the cave troll painted. But next I'm gonna pick out the eyes on the model. So for this, I'm coming in with some Abaddon Black first. I'm gonna sink this into the recess of the eye socket. And 
then with some white scar, I'm going to paint a thin line in the middle of each eye. And then finally, with some black again, I'm going to do a vertical line through the middle of that white, which will act like a pupil. And that's the eyes painted, really giving some character to the model. So now there's only one thing left to paint, and that is his teeth and his nails. So for this, I'm coming in first with some wraith bone. I'm gonna paint all of his nails on his hands and his feet, and the teeth in his mouth as well, with a solid coat of wraith bone. very neat at this stage you don't want to get this over all the stuff we've already painted and highlighted up and after a couple of coats of wraith bone we've got a solid cover all over those nails and teeth And then finally, I'm coming in with some Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint. I'm just going to paint this over the Wraith Bone to give it a dirty, bony appearance. And there we have it. That is how to paint a Cave Troll for Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game. So I hope you enjoyed the video, thank you very much for watching, please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and happy painting!